Welcome back to part 3 on exponential functions. Graph 3 to the x, 5 to the x, 10 to the x, and 20 to the x. Compare that with what you see in the family of curves I have below. Notice that as the values in the base increase, the rate at which the exponential growth is occurring is also increasing. Similarly, as your base becomes smaller and smaller, if it is a fractional base, the quicker your decay occurs. We also need to notice that all of these functions do not have any transformations up or down. So the plus c is irrelevant because it's basically plus zero. This means that my horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. And I'll draw that in now. The horizontal asymptote for this family of exponentials exists along the x-axis where y equals zero. It also has a intercept along the y-axis at 0, 1 for all the functions. Let's see if we can figure out what we would need to do to any one of the functions listed above to shift the horizontal asymptote to negative 3. Well, remember that all my functions had the form y equals b to the x. If we wanted to shift any one of these functions down 3, we would simply subtract 3 from what was given. This would give us a new horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 3. We're also asked what we would need to do to have a y-intercept at 3. Well again, our original function was b to the x, and if we wanted our function to have a new scalar, or y-intercept, we would rewrite this as y equals 3b to the x, where 3 is a scalar that would shift my y-intercept from 1 to 3. In example two, we need to find the exponential function whose graph is given. We are given a point along the curve at 2, 16. And we're also given a, an intersection point that's assumed to be at 0, 1. Using this second coordinate point, 2, 16, I'm going to substitute values into the form formula for the generic exponential function, y equals b to the x, because it appears it has not been shifted up or down, and it has not been scaled by a. Substituting 16 in for y, I get b raised to the 2, substituting 2 in for x. If I take the square root of both sides, I'll get b is equal to 4. And so rewriting the function y equals 4 raised to the x. This represents the curve given in example 2a. Now let's do a similar process for example 2b. Again, the function is approaching the x-axis, which means it has not been shifted up or down. My coordinate point is listed as 3, 1 over 27. The curve again appears to be crossing the y-axis at 0, 1. Therefore, I will use the generic formula y equals b to the x, substituting x in as 3. I'll get b to the third equals 1 over 27. If I take the cube root of both sides to undo the exponent of 3, b 
equals one third. So I can rewrite the standard function, exponential function for this curve as y equals one third raised to the x. We're now going to use transformations to graph the following. We know that there is a horizontal asymptote for a standard generic function without any vertical shifting at zero. Since we know that this is two to the x plus four, we know there will be a horizontal asymptote at four. So now let's just re redo our graph of two to the x, pretending that y equals four is the x-axis. So when x is zero, my function is at one. When x is one, my function is at two. When x is at two, my function is at four. When x is three, my function is eight. And I can sketch the graph of this exponential function here. Do you see how I just pretended that y equals four is my new x-axis? And everything is just shifted up four from what I had originally. I'm gonna break this up into pieces. I have a negative one times five raised to the x minus two. Remember when you have an x minus two, that means we're shifting the function to the right two units. It also means that we're reflecting due to this negative one out front. We are reflecting it about the x-axis, meaning it will be opening downwards instead of upwards. So we have a lot going on here. First, I'm gonna flip it down so now I will be at zero, negative one. And then with an exponent of one, I would be at five, but it's negative five. So somewhere here. But now I've got to shift my function to the right two units because of the minus two. So the function is going to look something like this. You are welcome to graph this in your calculator and look at the tables to determine what this looks like. So I'll go ahead and do this for you now. So I have negative one times five raised to the open paren x minus two close paren. I'll graph that. It's not easy to just look at your graph on your calculator and determine where this is happening. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so that I only am looking at a small portion of the window. I'm gonna go from about negative five to five in the x direction and I'm going to go from around negative four to four in the y direction. So you can see that at two, I'm at negative one. If I wanted to look at the table of values, I would click second table to determine the inputs and outputs respectively for different values along this curve. 